hell's calling at this hour? Oh, shit. Hey. Hi, Shroomy. Congratulations on making it to the semi-finals. You've done so well this season. Uh, yeah, um, thanks, Addy, and, I, uh, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> congrats to you too, I, um, <clears throat> suppose. Yeah, uh, no, I always knew I'd make it this far, but you, I mean, you've done quite well for yourself. Very, very well played. I mean, it's, hmm. I didn't think you'd make it this far. Yeah, I don't think you're alone in that. Um, anyway, to, uh, to what do I owe the, um, is pleasure the right word? Yeah. Well, I'll be honest, I came by, you know, to schedule with you for our upcoming semi-finals match. Mwah -ha 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 -ha. Yeah. But, yeah. I also came to thank you for just making it so easy for me, getting rid of the people who've been trying to game the system through their hacks and their manipulation. All this shit's gone now, and we get to enter our game with a, with a clean slate. I mean, I... I guess, but you said not to worry about that. You, you didn't seem to show any interest when you let yourself into my house. Oh, I was just having a little bit of fun with you, Shroomy. Of course I knew about Jack from the very beginning, but... Wait, whoa, wait, what? You knew? Him? Oh, of course I knew. Like I said, I know everything. Yeah, I suppose you... you did it, but... No, wait, hang on. Well, if you knew, why didn't... Why didn't you do something about it? You're a better coach than I am. Why didn't you take any action? You need to know something about me, Shroomy. And that's that I don't answer to anyone. Why would I even bother risking my position on the hacks when I can watch you flounder through your games and you could just get rid of all the, the hacks for me? And, uh, you know, all of a sudden now... <sighs> everything's back in my control again. You've done me such a nice favor. Yeah, well, you know what? You're welcome. But as for things being in your control, do not think I'm going to take this lying down, alright? Now, it may be a surprise to you that I've got this far. It's a surprise to me I've got this far. But I'm not going to go down without a fight. You know that, don't you? Oh, it'll be fun to watch you try. This is going to be so sweet if I do manage to beat you. You know that all the pressure is on you. Have you thought about what might happen if you actually might lose here? Have I thought about what might happen if the coach who said in his preseason interview that he was terrified of me loses to me? <sighs> no, I think that's pretty obviously going to happen. Well, fear can be a pretty big factor in these things, but I've gotten through worse, okay? You forget, I've won the PPL before, okay? Which isn't something that could be said for you. Didn't you come up short in season one? Yeah, well... It was around this, this time, wasn't it? Semi-finals? <sighs> Maybe. I had a little bit of a tough streak last time, but that was before you paved the way for my win. Everything you've done by catching Jack and just stopping everything just primed my win even more, and it means I get to destroy you even harder for my title at the PPL. From my cold, dead hands, Addison. Hmm, bring it on. <sighs> Hello everyone, Shroom Raver here, and welcome to the semi-finals of Pokemon Premier League Season 2. Yes indeed, we have made it all the way to the final four. It's getting very, very tough and it doesn't get any easier. This is, I would say it's up there with one of the most important games of Draft League that I've ever played. This game 
We are going up against Addison, coach of the London Shockwave. Her links will be down in the description below. Make sure that you check those out. Now, as you'll hopefully have seen with the intro, um, she called me up late at night to schedule the game and to uh, give me a kind of terrifying message of thanks, weirdly, for uh, dealing with all the hacks and uh, conspiracy stuff that's been happening this season. It turns out she knew all along just didn't act on it. She didn't want to put herself in a risky position where she could lose something outside of her control when I could just end up doing it for her. And I fell right into the trap. And now with all that out of the way, we have to face off against one of the most threatening people in the league. Now, she may not have come to our aid when we needed it the most, but it would be disingenuous of me to suggest that she isn't a very, very talented drafter, builder and battler. So do make sure you check out her stuff. <sighs> this is not going to be easy, but for everything we've been through, we've got to give it our all. So, shall we take a look at the most threatening team in the league? Addison can choose from Deoxys Speed, Greninja, Dragonite, Swampert, Tinkerton, Zamazenta Crowned, Sarina, Ursaring, Rotom Fan, and Quillfish. Her Terra Captains, incidentally, there are the Sarina that can go Grass, Ice, and Ground. Ursaring can go Normal, Fairy, and Ghost. This is... I don't even need to tell you how terrifying of a team this is. That sort of top three speed tier offensive mons of Deoxys Speed, Greninja, and Zamazenta have been terrorizing this league ever since she picked up the Zamazenta and before. Uh, Dragonite is one of the most powerful, terrifying setup sweepers going. Um, she's been using the bulk of Tinkerton and Swampert very effectively, getting good value out of the lower tier picks. That Sarina has been a nightmare for people to deal with. The Rotom Fan has been putting in work. Ursaring and Quillfish have come occasionally and done work. This is not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, we, we came into this league as an underdog, let alone going into this battle. Um, people didn't expect us to get here. But we're going to give it our best shot. We have to. We owe it to ourselves. So, let's take a look at the team I will be bringing. We start off with Yarchiberry Garchomp here. Uh, max attack adamant, 236 speed. Some nominal Spadef investment. Earthquake, Scale Shot, Fire Fang, and Swords Dance. It is a set we've been using a lot. Uh, but it is one of the better Garchomp sets. And it's all born out of necessity. Um, I am not running a Jolly Natured set here. There is no point, because that Deoxy speed will outspeed us at plus one no matter what. It doesn't matter. So instead, I'm focusing on being able to tank out a hit from something and hit back hard. That is what Garchomp is here for. Uh, the Archieberry to take rogue ice beams from the Deoxys, the Greninja, the Swampert, any of these kind of things. Uh, ice spinners from the likes of the Dragonite, stuff like that. All born of being able to take a hit and take something out and try and rinse and repeat. Next up, we have the Citrus Berry Mew. It is a very similar set to what we ran against uh, Ricky, except it's mostly physically defensive. We've got some nominal Spadef in there as well, a decent amount actually. Knockoff U turn, Super Fang, and Spikes going on there. Um, I think Spikes are going to be more necessary than Stealth Rock. They're certainly going to be more helpful. Uh, Stealth Rock only really being a massive issue for the Rotom Fan and the D-Knight. And the Dragonite could very well be running boots to maintain that multi-scale. Mew is here to do what it did against Ricky. Chip things down as much as possible for something more threatening to come in and deal with the problems. Third member of the team is going to be my Terra Fairy Sinistra with the Babiri Berry. Uh, again, very physically defensive. We've got a bit of Spadef in there once again. Uh, most of my team is going to be focused on the physically defensive side because Addy's team only really has a few special attackers. You're looking mostly at that uh, Deoxys, uh, Greninja, and the Rotom. But we have Reflect, Terra Blast, Shadow Ball, and Strength Sap. Fairy Ghost coverage, once again, is king here. Strength Sap is going to be necessary against the multitude of physical attackers she has. Reflect is going to help us out with that. Terra Fairy Sinister can take on so many of her team members 
1v1 and generally as a group, especially with support from that Babiri Berry to take the likes of the Heavy Slam from Zamazenta, the Iron Heads from the Dragonite, things like that. The Tinkerton's Gigaton Hammer in there as well that we shouldn't be staying in against the Tinkerton. But Sinister is one of the most important pieces in this puzzle for me and I need it to pull its weight. Fourth member of the team is going to be Heavy Duty Boots Entei here, uh, coming in adamant max attack, uh, max speed on there, uh, which will allow me to outrun, I believe it is the Rotom at max speed. We have Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Trailblaze and Stone Edge. Um, it's not necessarily the greatest matchup in terms of Entei taking hits, but nothing on Addy's team wants to take a Sacred Fire. Um, Deoxys will get blown back by it, most of everything else is physically offensive and doesn't want to take a burn. Even the Swampert doesn't appreciate Sacred Fire into Trailblaze. The Greninja will take it the best, but it doesn't want to take that heavy chip damage that I can dish out. Stone Edge on there is allowing me to hit the likes of that Dragonite, the Rotom Fan once again. Trailblaze for the speed, E-Speed because she has a number of Extreme Speed Mons on her team as well. If I can get up a Trailblaze, I can at least out-prioritize the Dragonite and Entei is bulky enough to take one E-Speed from the Deoxys and maybe get another Trailblaze up to outrun that guy. Speaking of outrunning that guy, we have Scarfed Enamorous here, with a, again, a very similar set to what we ran in week eight of the regular season against Danny, Kalua Boom. Moonblast, Earth Power, Healing Wish, and Tailwind is the same set. Uh, EVs on there, let me just scroll. 232 Speed, Timid, Max Special Attack. Um, this is the thing that's going to outpace that Deoxys. Um, it's pretty much the only thing I have that will. There's no point me trying with anything else. Like, plus one Garchomp doesn't outspeed it. The only thing faster than an Amorous is Raikou, which doesn't have a great matchup when there's the likes of Zamazenta and Swampert kicking around. But Moonblast Earth Power goes into Addy's team pretty hard. I have to be aware of that Tinkerton, which could be Air Balloon. That is what I'm anticipating, so that's got to be broken before this guy can do any work, but it can do work. And speaking of doing work, we have the wild card. Our final member is going to be Fortress here. We are just running max attack, max defense, with a relaxed nature, protect, body press, gyro ball, and curse. Cursed Fortress can actually do a lot of work against her. Um, this is probably going to be my lead, trying to uh, bluff getting some hazards up. And this is going to lead nicely into what I think she's going to bring. Quite honestly, I think she's just going to bring a top six. Deoxys, um, Greninja, Dragonite, Swampert, Tinkerton, and Zamazenta, those are the six I think she's bringing. She has a lot of value with Sorina, but realistically, Sorina doesn't want to come to a match that has Sinister in it. I think she's just going to try and prevent me getting hazards up in the first place. What I'm hoping is that she will lead with Taunt Deoxys, because of raw um, gyro ball will blow that thing back. If I can get some curses up with this guy, then things are going to go very well for me with the combination of body press gyro ball. So that's what I'm bringing. Like I say, I'm expecting that top six. I'm expecting um, some kind of setup Zamazenta. I'm expecting the balloon Tinkerton. There's not a lot of setup on this team. And the reason for that is, quite simply, she is too good of a player to let me. Like, she is not going to let Sinister set up Car Mines. She's not really going to probably let Garchomp set up a Sword Sans, but it's the only thing I'm packing that kind of offensive setup on, because why not? If I get the chance, it's high risk but high reward. Um, she's not going to want to let me set up Hazards or set up uh, offensively in her face. I'm half expecting there to be at least one moment in this match where something has a move to prevent me setting up in some way, and I'll be like, ah, oh, I didn't know it got that, because that's the kind of coach that Addison is. But that's the team I'm going into this match with. It's not going to be easy, but we are going to give it our level best shot. So without further ado, let's get into the battle and see in the preview what Addison has decided to bring against me. So, here we are. Addy has decided to bring Deoxys Speed, Greninja, Zamazenta Crowned, Dragonite, Swampert, and Tinkerton. It's exactly the six that I was expecting her to bring. It's her top six picks. <sighs> no reason to switch up my idea of a lead. I'm going to go with Fortress. Hope that she leads with the Deoxys. Anything except the Swampert would be a fine lead for me. I'd be okay with it. Um, ideally not the Tinkerton as well, but that's what we're going with. 
Let's get into the battle, see how it plays out. So, here we go. It's semi-final time against Addison and the London Shockwave. <clears throat> As you'll see, she is going to lead with the Swampert. Didn't want to see that. That's unfortunate. I'm going to lead with Fortress. I have nothing to hit this guy with. I have no real reason to stay in here. Um, this is not something that I wanted to see this early with Fortress out there. I'm going to have to get on out of there immediately, to be honest. Um, Mew and Sinister are my go-to ones for this. And Mew is looking like the most likely course of action. Try and get a Super Fang off on it as quickly as possible. So, going to switch on out of there <clears throat> with Fortress and go into my Mew to try and chip this thing down as early as possible. Maybe get some spikes up along the way. It's, going come, it's all going to come to naught, unfortunately. Uh, she's packing the Yawn, goes for it frame one. So, I can't stay in here. Um, and let my Mew go to sleep. I really need everything awake and being able to take action against her team. So I'm going to have to go for U-turn here. Kind of hope she's not packing Protect and U-turn into something else. Again, this time it's most likely going to be my Sinister. So U-turn is going to come off here. That's going to do very little damage and we take a bit of Rocky Helmet, which is a bit less than ideal, but that is just the way it's got to be. Uh, I am going to go into Sinister here. Uh, Sinister will threaten out the Swamper with the threat of a Matcha Gotcha, uh, which I'm not packing, but she doesn't know that. So, I'm going to go into Ishi Usu here, which the Swamper doesn't want to stay in on, uh, and she's going to get her rocks up. That's unfortunate. I have no way of getting rid of those. Actually, yeah, no, I don't, because I'm not packing Rapid Spin on the Fortress, but uh, this is my chance to get a Reflect up early game against the threat of her physical offense. So that is just what I'm going to do straight off the bat. Now she's going to get on out of there with the Swamper. Doesn't want the threat of a hit coming her way. And is going to go hard into Dragonite here. Now I don't tear it up. I'm just going to get my Reflect up. Um, the fact that she's gone into this, either anticipating the match of gotcha, but I don't think she wants to take the risk of a burn on Dragonite. What this is telling me that she might be is weakness policy. Now that's not something I want to deal with, so I want to break that multi-scale by going for Shadow Ball, ensuring that I can get the maximum damage off with Terror Blast later on down the line to try and get rid of this Dragonite if it is indeed that weakness policy set. So, it doesn't quite work out, and here's that, oh I didn't know it got that moment, because I didn't know the Dragonite gets Encore. That's very unfortunate, I'm now Encored into Reflect, which is a big L for Sinister over here. I can't be staying in on this, I have to get on out of there and go into my Mew as a sort of catch-all answer to whatever this Dragonite might throw my way. Now there's no sense in her staying in here. Uh, she could be setting up DDs, or she might not have anything to hit a regular looking Sinister. Either way, she knows I'm going to switch out and that she can't damage me too much behind Reflect. She's going to go into Swampert on whatever I switch into, and for me, as I say, that is going to be my Mew. Mew, unfortunately, has taken a little bit more damage than I would have liked, but one or two more switch-ins and I'll be in Citrus Berry range. Now, I consider going for Spikes here, but what I really want is Super Fang damage on this Swamper, because it's too bulky and I'm not a fan of that. So, I'm going to click Super Fang here, try and get this thing down by 50% of what it's got left, and it won't be able to recover that because it's not leftovers. So, I'm going to go for Super Fang. We are going to miss. That is unfortunate. Um, and she's going to be able to get a Yawn off. Like I say, that sucks, but realistically, it happens. It's not a 100% accurate move, um, and that's the difference I always find between bad luck and hacks. That's not hacks, that's just unfortunate. It happens. We've been very fortunate with the moves we've hit over the course of this season, so not going to hold that against anyone. Sometimes it be that way. But she has gone for Yawn, I have to get on out of there, and it's going to be Sinister that I choose to go into. So, not going to go for U-turn, just going to go hard into the Sinister here on whatever this Swampert wants to do. And as you'll see, after we take the rocks damage, uh, she is going to flip turn, which is going to do nothing because I'm a grass type, I'm behind a reflect. But now she can choose to go into any one of her innumerate threats to this guy. Um, she will know that she has to take this Sinister out as quickly as possible, otherwise it can do really nasty things to the team. Now Addison is going to elect to go into her Greninja here. Um, my Reflect wears off, but she will know that I'm physically defensive. That's the best build to bring against her team. I'm kind of anticipating this thing to be Battle Bond, not Protean. And since I haven't Terrored, she might go in for the kill. And this is going to sucker me into popping my Terror off. Um, she won't be able to take me out with a Terror, even if she predicts it and goes for Sludge Wave. 
So I am going to predict her not to want to do that. So either way, my play here is to Terra and just go for the Terra Blast. If this thing stays in, it's going to take big damage. So I am going to pop my Terra on Sinister. Addy didn't bring any Terra Captains, so everything is as it is. So there is Terra Fairy Sinister, one of just the delights of this season for me. I've loved using it. Uh, we've clicked Terra Blast. Addison here is going to go for the U-turn. As we'll see, she is in fact Protean. And it's around this moment that I realise, ah, she's going into Dragonite, isn't she? That would prove that she is weakness policy if she opts to do that. And she will very likely be built to take these hits. And as you'll see, in comes the Dragonite. I go for the Terra Blast. Now the multi-scale is still intact. This isn't going to do a whole huge amount. And even so, knowing that, it does less than I thought. And here, we're going to see the weakness policy. Now, looking at that damage, this Dragonite is built to take two hits from full from Terra Fairy Sinister. That is clear. I won't take her out here. However, she has no means of Okoing me. So my play is to go for Terra Blast again, get as much damage as possible, switch into an appropriate check to whatever move she is going for, save Sinister to strength sap up on the Swampert later on. Now she's going to go for Earthquake. This has no shot of taking me out. Unless that happens. That is what Shady Penguin would call a dagger. I don't need to tell you that that crit 100% mattered. Now my plan is in ruins. I would have lived that, taken her down to the red, and been able to go into something like the Fortress to better take it on. Unfortunately, that's no longer an option. Now I'm looking at my Enamorous here, but with the rocks up, a plus two max invested extreme speed, which I'm absolutely betting that she has on this Dragonite, will one shot my Enamorous. I can't go into it. So I effectively have to sack something else. I can't go into the Garchomp because I can't risk not taking it out with the uh, scale shot that I'm packing. In hindsight, I probably ought to have gone into it, but my play that I decide to make as you'll see, I'm hovering over the Fortress, and that is what I am going to choose to go into in the end. And my play, in my mind, is to just start going for Gyro Balls, hope that she has more speed than she's letting on. So, in comes the Fortress. And again, I misplay here a little bit. What I should have done is gone for Protect, but in my mind, I was like, I can't go for Protect or Curse. We know she has Encore, and she can do nasty things if my Fortress is Encore into something. So in my mind, I kind of have to go for Gyro Ball and hope that it's going to do enough to seriously damage this thing. So, Addy's going to go for Earthquake here, and as you'll see, that does significantly over half of what I have left. Gyro Ball does a good amount, but it's not enough. However, she is staying in and attacking, which is good to know. So what I'm going to do here is go for that Protect, and maybe hope that she high rolled me. Maybe hope that with the additional leftovers I can take another hit. Protect is going to come in here, and Addison is maintaining the course. She is going for Earthquake. We're going to get a bit of leftovers back. But as you'll see from the amount of damage she did to me with Earthquake, and the amount I get back from leftovers, this is looking like a losing battle for poor old Fortress, who I had high hopes for. But what it looks like now is that I'm going to have to just go for Gyro Ball, hope to take a hit. And then I'm going to have to go into Garchomp afterwards. I know I can take a plus two extreme speed. I just have to hope Scale Shot hits. So I'm not going to push my luck with double protects. I'm going to go for the Jura Ball, but it's all for naught because Earthquake is going to come in and take out Fortress. So we are immediately finding ourselves 6 4 down and horribly on the back foot. I have barely damaged her team at this point, but I still have pieces that can do work. You know, Garchomp can take out this Dragonite. And then it's probably game over for Garchomp. But then Mew can do work. And Entei is looking like it's gone from a burning breaker to something that's going to have to try and win me this game. So, Mew, uh, sorry, Garchomp is going to come in here. Um, I'm going to have to tank an E-Speed. I know I can because I'm naturally very bulky. And I'm just going to have to hope I hit a scale shot. So, in comes the Extreme Speed. As you'll see, we are able to tank that. We get some nice rough skin damage, which is fine. I'm going to go for the scale shot, and we are going to hit, and that is going to take out the Dragonite. So in hindsight, I could have just gone into this Garchomp before Fortress and saved it, but I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit playing on tilt at that point. Now I'm trying to get my zoning back and get back into focus. I am at plus one speed, 
But if she brings in that Deoxys, that's not going to matter a job. And it is going to be the Deoxys that comes in. Now, I know that she will be prepped to outpace a plus one Garchomp. Like, I'm fully aware of that. I knew that going in. I also am fairly sure she's going to have Ice Beam, and I'm also certain that that Yarchi Berry is not going to save me. But realistically, she has a lot of things that outspeed my Garchomp. She has the Zamazenta, she has the Greninja, she has this. There is no sense to be saving Garchomp here. Garchomp's got a kill. He's made sure it's not a 6-0. But realistically, I don't have a choice. I have to let Garchomp go down here. And, you know, maybe she's not running any speed investment. It's a long shot, and I know it's not true. But I'm just going to go for the Earthquake here and hope. And as you'll see, that hope is in vain. She is packing enough speed to outpace Garchomp with plus one. I knew she would. Yarchibiri doesn't save me, and Garchomp is going to go down with another crit. That one didn't matter, but it is insult to injury. Garchomp goes down, and now we have to go from here at 3 versus 5. Now I considered going into Entei here, but if she is packing Psycho Boost with that Life Orb, that is damage Entei cannot afford to take right now. Again, I'm just outside of Citrus range, but I have nominal Spideff investment. If she is packing something like Shadow Ball or Dark Pulse, I will live this hit. I won't live it well, but I'll be able to get a really crucial knockoff onto this guy, which might allow Entei to live an E speed further down the line, if Deoxys even takes the hit. So I'm going to go for Super Fang, Try and tank whatever hit she is going to go for. And let's say, if that is Shadow Ball or Dark Pulse, we will tank it barely and try and get a knockoff onto this Deoxys. So, in comes the Shadow Ball that we expected to see coming, and that is going to score another crit. And yet again, we would have taken that hit. That is just another knife to the heart. There's nothing I can do about that. That's two crits that shouldn't have KO'd that did, that have put us in just the worst position imaginable in the most important game we've played. You know, Addison made sure I took care of the people who were manipulating hacks, and now it just comes back to bite me because it's all going her way. Now I have to go into my uh, Enamorous. I don't have a choice. I will outspeed her at the very least, and this extreme speed won't be taking me out. But she's going to know that I'm Scarfed. She will have known how much work a Scarfed Enamorous could do to her. I'm going to go for Moonblast here. Uh, the switch into Tinkerton is fairly obvious, especially if she is the expected Air Balloon set. So I can't go for Earth Power because it won't do anything. So I have to go for Moonblast just to get damage in the case that she stays in. It will do a lot, but she doesn't. She is going to switch on out of there. We knew it was coming. And now in comes Lucy Lou, and as we'll see, it's Air Balloon. What a shock. So I'm going to go for Moonblast. That is going to do precious little damage to this Tinker Ton. It's five versus two, but here's the problem. I can't go hard into Entei. This Enamorous does not win me this game. Entei has an outside chance of maybe doing it. So what I have to do is stay in, because I can't take the risk of switching into Entei on a Thunder Wave. That kills me dead in the water. So what I have to do is just go for Moonblast, stay in, and take the L with Enamorous, and hope that Entei against all odds can pull this one out of nothing. So, gonna go for the Moonblast again, take her down to about 55-60ish percent. She is gonna go for Gigaton Hammer. So I could have gone into Entei, but it was a risk I could not afford to take at all. Because Entei is the only thing I had that had an outside chance of doing this. It is my last Mon, we're not messing around, we go straight into it now. I would love to set up Trailblazers here, truly I would, but once again, I cannot take the risk of her going for a Thunder Wave or something like a predicted Encore, which, spoiler alert, she does have on this as well. I have to go for Sacred Fire. It's the only play. At the very least, it'll take it to a 4-0. There is the tiniest, minutest hope that Entei might be able to pull this back. So, gonna go for the Sacred Fire, that's gonna take out the Tink. So down it goes, it's 1v4. She has Deoxys, Swampert, the Zamazenta that hasn't even hit the field, and the Greninja. Now Addy is gonna present me with just that tiniest hint of hope, because in comes the Swampert. I'm gonna need a Mega Crit for this to take out Swampert. If that Super Fang had hit, this would be an entirely different ball game. but thinking about it, if that Super Fang had hit, she wouldn't have gone into this thing in the first place. I essentially have to hope that I can go for a Trailblaze, Mega Crit this guy, take it out, 
and then I'll have to go for possibly another Trailblaze on whatever comes in. So here we go, Trailblaze is going to come in. We do land a crit, but it's just not enough. We get the Speed Raise, take the Rocky Helmet damage. Unfortunately, she's going to go for Flip Turn, and that crit actually put her into Torrent range. <clears throat> We do live the hit because it's not a particularly strong move. Swampert doesn't particularly have investment and Entei is very physically bulky, but everything is going to outspeed me from here. In comes the Greninja, it's Agent Banana. Now I'm going to go ahead and, here and head in here and tell you she isn't packing any water stab on this guy. I didn't know that, but I'm thinking maybe I can get another super crit with Trailblaze and she goes for Hydro Pump and misses. That is essentially my only play here. I have to play for a choke that Addison is too good of a player to let happen. And it's all for naught because this is Scarfed Greninja. She's going to go for Dark Pulse, get a crit again just to rub salt in the wound. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the game. So yeah, we do take a considerable devastating 4-0 loss to Addison in the semi-finals. That was a rough, rough one. And there was very little we could do about it. You know, after dealing with the conspiracies of the PPL, taking down the Don Fanatic, who was messing with hacks and trying to puppeteer his way to victory through that, I thought that was done. I thought that was it. And then Addison came in, she told me when it came to like hacks and it came to all this kind of stuff, she said, don't worry about it. Well, I should have been worried about it because all the luck did go her way. I mean, I was, I'm not going to pretend it was ever going to be an easy game. I'm not going to pretend that a win was guaranteed if those things didn't happen. But it is devastating when it does. Um, you know, I've been on the receiving end of that kind of hacks before. I've been the beneficiary of that kind of hacks before. Um, you never like to see it from a winning or losing perspective, especially in such a crucial, important game, the semi-finals. But unfortunately, sometimes that is just the way it goes. And we were dead in the water. I mean, we were pretty much dead in the water after that first crit. But to see two game-changing crits and then two more crit KOs just to add insult to injury, that stings, it really does. But like I say, that is the way it goes. And unfortunately, <clears throat> we had a good run in the PPL. We were consummate underdogs for most, if not all of the season. But unfortunately for us, for Paris Saint-Germain, the dream is over. We crash out in the semi-finals. We made top four and that is fine. Um, now here, I am going to spoil the results of the other semi-final game. If you haven't seen that yet, the match of uh, Killua Boom versus uh, Mounte, uh, skip this bit, don't listen, because I'm going to tell you who won. Uh, so you've had your warning, there it is. Um, yeah, Mounte won. Uh, um, you know, Mounte and Addison were always the favourites to be in the final. Myself and Danny, we've had quite the scrap to get to where we got. And, you know, we help each other build. We're in our own little council with other people. Um, we have taken the decision. We're not going to have a third place playoff match. We are both happy to settle for joint thirds. Um, it's more than we expected of ourselves. Uh, so we're happy to take that. That's fine. So Addison versus Mountain in the final. Good fortune to both of them. Uh, they deserve to be there entirely. You know, we couldn't prevent anyone else from winning the league, but at least we prevented a conspiracy from taking that title. For whatever their faults, for whatever their positionings, Addison and Mounte were never part of that conspiracy. Addison just happened to be the beneficiary, and hopefully one day we'll be able to get our revenge on her specifically for what happened here. But that's a story for another time. For us, the dream is over. Um, but good fortune to those in the finals. And we took third, which is more than I thought would happen. But that's the end of it. Uh, sometime in the coming week, I'll be uploading my, um, my season wrap up of everything. And we'll just have to see where the story goes from here. Um, will we be back for season three? Maybe, but that again is a conversation for another time. But as ever, thank you all so much for watching. 
Uh, make sure you check out Addison's links down in the description below. Uh, absolutely make sure you check out all of her content. I'll be speaking more about her and the other coaches at length in my summation video uh, coming up sometime next week. But I'm going to get out of here. I've rambled on far too long. So, my final thank you to you all for watching. And I guess with that, I will see you next time. Laters.